So it is 4.30 in the morning and I am just setting off on the uh, Sheffield Country Walk. Um, this bridge uh, crosses over um, the Totley Brook, which is about half a mile from my house. Um, the walk in total is about 52 miles and there's about 6,000 feet of ascent. Um, so I'm going to be doing it over two days, um, bivvying out one night. And uh, yeah, it should be uh, good fun. Trying out a few bits of new kit, um, this rucksack, um, and also um, the bivy bag that I'm using is a 3FUL um, Tyvek bivy bag, um, which I've not used before. Um, so we'll see how I get on with that. Anyway, let's get cracking. Beautiful, clear sky, full moon, uh, lots of stars out. The sun's uh, about to rise, um, lots of bird song. Just a really beautiful morning, really cold though. Um, I started off just in a windproof and a t-shirt and uh, very soon had to fish out my down jacket. Um, the temperature today is, is going to get quite warm I think. Uh, the forecast was for it to get to about 20 degrees. So I'm wearing my shorts today. So I've been walking for about four hours, um, up till now it's mostly been sort of farmland, um, some forest and uh, now I'm uh, doing the sort of eastern part of Sheffield, so uh, this is the River Rother um, to my left and I'm soon going to be walking uh, through Rother Valley and then up towards the north of Sheffield. There'll probably be a few little parks and uh, a few little wild places um, in sort of between Sheffield and Rotherham that I've never explored before so that should be quite interesting. I've been told there's some kingfishes uh, along this stretch so I need to keep my eyes peeled. I dare say I'll probably see a couple of herons as well. So this is Rother Valley Country Park. Um, the last time I was here was about goodness probably 15 or 16 years ago and I was running round and round this lake, training for the London Marathon. Um, didn't do me much good, I got a terrible time. Uh, but yeah, nice to be back. I should come here more often with the kids. I've walked about a kilometre along this path, thinking that I could cross the, this railway track on my right hand side. Um, just up ahead, turns out I can't. So I'm gonna have to walk back a, another kilometre and uh, cross over a bridge which um, I had considered crossing over in the first place. <laughs> so I've added probably 2Ks or just over a mile to the walk, uh, but uh, no biggie. It was bound to happen at some point. Um, I'll know better for next time if I choose to do it again. I'm in uh, Woolly Wood near Shire Green and uh, my leg is starting to feel a bit tired. Uh, base of my toes is starting to feel a bit warm. I think I'm going to have to take my socks off and uh, give them a bit of an air, try and dry them out. I don't want to be getting blisters, otherwise tomorrow is going to be not very pleasant. Um, I'm going to really try and push today though, probably maybe try and do another 10 miles, uh, break the back of this and try and get to a nice spot um, and try and get to Dyke Dale, maybe next to the, uh, the dike, the reservoir, um, and have some water, nice forest to bivy in. And if I'm feeling brave, maybe a, a chance for a wild swim in the morning, who knows. Under my big toe here, I'm just starting with a little blister, just there. Unfortunately, um, I didn't bring any uh, blister plasters or any tape or anything like that. I was just trying to pack ultralight 
and forgot some of the uh, important essentials. Um, so I'm just going to have to see how I get on with that. Uh, I've got some brufin and paracetamol, so I've taken some of those. You can see that my feet are absolutely filthy, uh, covered in mud. Um, I think that's from this morning, walking across all those uh, muddy farmers' fields, and the shoes are absolutely caked in mud as well. Uh, these shoes are pretty much on their last legs. This might be their final uh, expedition, as it were. Um, anyway, a couple more minutes drying out, and I think I'll be uh, back on the road, um, trying to cover some more miles. So it's about quarter to seven. Um, this is where I chose to sleep tonight, uh, sheltered next to this wall on a nice uh, flat bit of forest on some leaves um, in my Tyvek uh, 3FUL um, zip up bivy bag. And it's one of the best night's sleep I've ever had um, out camping. I think I must have managed a, a solid seven or eight hours, probably only woke once or twice, which uh, is it's about as good as it gets for me. Didn't get any cramp, which is amazing because I normally get wicked cramp. I think I probably uh, helped by eating uh, a lot of salty peanuts and drinking lots of water yesterday. I woke up at about, uh, I don't know, I'd say probably quarter past six because a, <laughs> a toad had managed to crawl into the bivy bag and was um, squeaking is the only word I could really use for it. Um, I thought it was a mouse or something and I was searching around for what was where the source of this nose, noise was and there was this toad sat right next to my head. So that was uh, a bit strange. Um, but yeah, so I, I think the temperature around about um, quarter past, twenty past six, um, just as a pure guess, I think it was probably above 10 degrees. Um, it did cloud over a little bit last night and there's zero wind so it was really good conditions uh, for a nice warm night um, so it wasn't a, a great test for the bag or uh, anything like that but it just meant I was able to have a really nice comfortable night's sleep I think I did about uh, it must be nearly 40 miles yesterday which is the longest walk I've ever done in a day right so Finish my breakfast, have some brufin and paracetamol, and then pack up and get going. Um, I was worried that my legs were going to be really stiff and that I was barely going to be able to walk. But um, they feel pretty good, actually. Uh, a bit of an ache in my thighs and in my calves. But my knees feel absolutely fine. Um, I think I'll probably be able to maintain a good pace all the way home. Uh, hopefully be back before lunchtime. I'm on the footpath uh, that goes along the top of Stanage, just at the very far north end of Stanage. And uh, I feel like I'm on familiar territory now. Um, just a bit further on is High Neb, uh, which is part of a run that I do from home. So once I get there, I feel like I'll be on the home straight. Um, again, blessed with beautiful weather today. From here I can see uh, a lot of the hills that I did when I was doing the uh, Derwent Watershed walk a few months ago.
I did have plans to uh, maybe try and do a little bit of climbing on my way uh, past Stanich and past Burbage, but I'm so knackered that um, there's absolutely no chance. I just want to get home, uh, have some nice food other than uh, peanuts. Um, another thing I was hoping to do was to uh, go for a swim at Dyke Dale, um, but again, this morning I was really cold uh, and uh, I don't deal well with cold water, so I decided against that as well. So uh, best laid plans and all that. I decided for this walk to um, buy the uh, audience ordnance survey uh, map for my phone. So I downloaded the map, put it on my phone, and was using the map. Um, I started off using uh, the GPS function so I could see where I was on the map and then realized that that was draining the battery quite quickly. So I uh, decided to turn the GPS function off and just use the map uh, for map reading. But it, by the end of the day, um, I think, and this was aeroplane mode throughout, so I had Wi-Fi off, reception off, everything off, just using the phone as a map. I was down to about 20%, 15% on my phone. So I couldn't quite fathom why it was draining the battery so quickly when I didn't have GPS or uh, anything, really data, phone signal, anything on. It was in aeroplane mode. So if any of you can answer that question for me, it'd be much appreciated. I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I've always used maps. Uh, this is the first walk I've ever been on where I've used uh, a phone or a digital map. Um, so obviously I've got a lot of learning to do. Uh, so yeah, if you've got any ideas as to why that might have happened, please leave them in the comments below. So with regard to the gear that I've been using on this hike, um, I, I basically went as lightweight as I could. So I brought the Tyvek bivy bag, uh, my lightweight um, Aegis Max sleeping bag, and my X-Lite Therma rest, and uh, also trying out a new rucksack. Um, this is the Aou Nije Wind Runner, I believe it's called. Uh, it's an 18 litre uh, running pack so it's quite big for a running pack so perfect for sort of uh, long days out um, and then if you're really traveling light ultra light you could potentially do an overnighter with it as well I think I was probably pushing it to the limits of its capacity um, with this hike um, I'll do a good a full review on it another time um, the Tyvek bivy bag worked really nicely although I've got to say it wasn't really put to the test there was no dew in the morning and there was no uh, rain during the night, but um, it was brilliant in regard to the fact it was really spacious um, and uh, easy to get in and out of. So I'm on the final straight. I can pretty much see the finish line, uh, the bridge going over Totley Brook. Um, that's where I started yesterday, about four in the morning. Um, most people start in Eckington, which is a bit further along the trail. Um, overall, I think I've really enjoyed it. It's been uh, a big physical challenge, obviously, walking all that way. Um, and uh, my favourite bit, I think, was probably from Eccles Field and then round all the way round, probably to um, Eckington. Um, the section between Eckington and Eccles Field is quite urban, so uh, if you're going to do the walk, just be aware um, of the issues around that. Um, if you're a, a single woman, you, there's certain bits of the path that you might not want to do on your own. Uh, but it's, it's, overall it's been brilliant, you know, I've discovered bits of Sheffield that I never uh, knew existed. Um, I think I would recommend it to anybody who lives in Sheffield. Um, if you don't live in Sheffield, then I wouldn't recommend you go out of your way to do uh, the walk. You never know where you live, might have something similar, a circular walk. Um, around where you live. Um, fortunately Sheffield is surrounded by some beautiful countryside so it works well. Uh, what else can I say about it? 
Um, I'd recommend doing it probably over two days. So you've got the, the challenge of, of having to walk about 26 miles a day. Uh, you could find somewhere to stay in um, Bradfield. That'd be a nice place to stop um, and uh, have a nice meal and a, and a couple of pints in Bradfield at the end of the first day. Um, doing it in one day would be a massive challenge, way beyond my capability. I think 52 miles is is a bit too far for my tastes, um, at least at the moment, maybe if I get a bit fitter. So here it is, 30 hours after I set off yesterday morning, back at the bridge over Totley Brook, and that is a fantastic feeling. I have finished the Sheffield Country walk. What a great feeling.